So I've just set up the brand new iPadOS 18.1 beta that now comes with Apple Intelligence, or at least gives us our very first look at Apple Intelligence. Apple Intelligence includes the brand new Siri interface, a smarter Siri supposedly, and a more context aware Siri, a Siri that can pull information from your messages and your calendar and your emails and whatever else you have in your digital life. Apple Intelligence can even send you off to ChatGPT in the future if you don't like the response you're getting from Siri or you're looking for a different type of response. Apple AI will also do image generation. It'll help you rewrite emails and a whole bunch of other features, but this is just our very first look at the first version of iPadOS 18.1 with the very first few fragments of Apple Intelligence. So let's take a look at a couple of those real quick. First off, I do want to note that it is buggy. So when I tap and hold the side button, the thing does not launch. Sometimes if I say Siri, nope, see that time it didn't work. Sometimes if I say Siri, I'll get the new logo all the way around the screen, the new design, Siri, hey Siri. Nope, still nothing for me. It's kind of been working on and off. You can also now text Siri or type to Siri. So you can do that by double tapping down the bottom and I can say, hey, there's a Siri. So what's my next flight? And let's see if it gives me anything. Of course, nope, it's just giving me generic flight information, Google results. So it's not pulling in information from my emails or my text messages yet, but I do have a little bit of the new interface right there. Let's try that one more time. See if we can get, hey Siri, hey Siri, nope. Oh, hey, there we go. Now I'm getting the Hi, new design here. It's nice to meet and of you course, my Siri. 17 other devices are also popping up with Siri at the same time. But look at that cool new design. It looks pretty neat, right? One of the coolest new things about Apple AI is how it can help you rewrite things. So let's go ahead and type out an email. I'll just go ahead and paste it. So here's an email that's not necessarily the most tactful email saying, hey, I need a status update on this project and you're not getting me what I need and you're kind of a jerk and you need to give me the solution now. Of course, that's not gonna go off very well to whoever I send that to. So let's go ahead and double tap that. We'll go ahead and select the entire thing right there. We'll tap on writing tools. And here we have a number of different options. We can proofread. So if it's got grammar or spelling issues, it will help you fix that. It can rewrite it into just a little bit different format, or you can tell it specifically what type of format or tone that you're looking for. If you want it to be a little bit more friendly, a little more professional, or just kind of shorten it down, make it a little bit more concise. You can also just do a basic summary, key points, make it a list, put a table in there, different things. Of course, this isn't really gonna take advantage of that type of stuff. So let's go ahead and see if we can change the tone of this email, make it a little bit more, let's say professional. So instead of saying, I need you to get your crap together and find a solution to get back, get us back on track, let's see what it comes up with. We'll give it just a moment to do its thing. It says quality may vary, writing tools are not designed to handle this type of content. Well, I don't know what type of content it is trying to do then. So it looks like it changed it down here too. It is imperative that you take immediate action to rectify the situation and devise a comprehensive solution to restore the project's trajectory. Well, that is a bit much. So down here, I'm going to revert that. And let's try it again. Let's see if we go to writing tools and we say, uh, make it mo more friendly. It's gonna do its thing, quality may vary. I'd really appreciate it if you could get your team back on track and find a solution to get us moving forward. Yep, that does sound a little bit more friendly. So that might help me for my next project status meeting. Apple AI is also slightly more aware and conversational in this first beta. So we can ask it to do something and then change it up and it should be able to put those two things together. For example, Siri. Show me flights from Austin, Texas to Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. I found this on the web for show me flights from Austin, Texas to Boston, Massachusetts. Check it out. Actually, I think I want to fly to Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. I found this on the web for show me flights from Austin, Texas to Omaha, Nebraska. Check it out. So as you can see, I didn't have to repeat the entire question. It just kind of readjusted as I added more information. Other features like web summarization, which seems to be working on versions of iOS 18.1, do not seem to be working at least on my iPad at the moment. I don't see any option to actually push a button and see the feature on the iPad, but I have seen it on other videos for iOS 18.1. But mail summarization is working for me sometimes. So if I look at this message from a potential sponsor, I can go ahead and tap summarize at the top and get a much more concise version of this email so I don't have to read through the whole thing. And if you have a whole thread of messages, then Apple will be able to summarize that as well. 
But other than that, there's not a whole lot of other features inside this first beta as far as Apple intelligence goes. Of course, we should see some pretty rapid updates. I'm really curious to see how that goes. I'm also going to go ahead and install the 15.1 Sequoia beta on my MacBook Air as well to test that and see how it compares to the iPad and of course my iPhone. So if you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments down below. I'm super excited to see how these OSs progress throughout the year and as they come out, what they'll be compatible with and what they will and won't work with. But of course, they're always going to work with some of your favorite accessories, including this one from channel partner CalDigit. The CalDigit TS4 is the perfect desktop companion for your Mac, iPad, and Windows PC with all of the ports you need for at home or at the office. Ports like Thunderbolt, 10 gigabit USB, and audio in and out. But one question I get asked a lot is can the TS4 support dual displays? Yes, it sure can. That's right. The Thunderbolt Station 4 can connect dual displays to your Mac or PC as long as your computer can support multiple external displays. For example, here's my M3 MacBook Air, which does support dual displays, but only with the lid closed. And here's my Surface Laptop 7 with two displays connected while also using the external display. On the back of the TS4, you will find two downstream Thunderbolt 4 connections that can be used for directly connecting a Thunderbolt or USB-C display to your computer, but there's also a built-in DisplayPort connection. You can use any of the two ports for connecting up to dual 6K displays on a Mac or even high refresh rate displays, depending on your model and OS. You can also use adapters if needed to convert ports to a different connection like HDMI. So if you're looking for the all-in-one dock for your Mac or PC that does support dual displays, check out the TS4 today using the links below. And my thanks to CalDigit for sponsoring this video.